Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders, and it is that time of the week. It's lecture time, and this week, guys, I'm smashing some faces in. You're like, what? That's crazy. Yes, I'm going hard on you guys. I'm going tough on you guys. This week's lecture topic, guys, is how to make trading easier in 2024. All right, a lot of great slides. There's a five bullet point slide on here that literally is your process to making money in 2024. And I'm going to be very tough on you guys in this lecture because I am tired, sick and tired of watching you guys F things up and make huge mistakes. Trading does not have to be so difficult. It's you that are making it this difficult. So today, if you listen to this advice, you'll be able to simplify your trading and be more effective and hopefully make more money as well. That's the goal, right? Freedom, flexibility, time. Well, you need to be a good trader to have those things. And this lecture will hopefully help get you to that place, all right? How to make trading easier in 2024, all right? If you like these videos, please click the like button. Smash, hammer that subscribe button. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. Let's get to it. This week's lecture topic is how to make trading easier in 2024, right? I think we're all looking for that holy grail. Well, not to bust your bubble, it does not exist. However, there are definitely specific things that you can do to make your trading easier. And I'm finding that people are overcomplicating their trading. Um, and if I get a little bit tense, um, or uppity during this lecture, it's because of that. I may resort to yelling at you at some point today, probably not, but it's possible, um, because I'm watching what people do and I'm disgusted by it. Uh, I'm watching some of the things people are trying to do and they, they just defy logic. I mean, literally just throw logic out the window and just throw shit at the wall and be like, yeah, I hope it works, you know? Like trying to short the strongest stock in the entire world so you can skate 10 cents from it. Uh, those types of things, um, but more than that. So today we're going to talk about what you can actually do to affect change in your trading and what you should be looking for to make your trading easier. It's really not that difficult. It's not rocket science. I promise you I'm not lying when I say this. It's not rocket science. Forrest Gump can do it. You can do it. All right. So we're going to talk about probably three or four simple things that you can do to really supercharge your trading. But remember, just because they're the right things to do, I can't promise you'll actually go out and do them because your ego, your mind, whatever may keep you from doing those things. But hey, some people like having a boss. Some people like being broke. Some people like being poor. It's like some badge of honor, like misery loves company. Good for you people. I can't help you. But for the people that have a genuine wanting and willingness to move away from that and not have a boss and have freedom and flexibility and want to earn money so you can do the things you actually really want to do, well, then this lecture is for you, okay? For everybody else, you know, just keep winging it, all right? Just keep hanging around your poor friends and being just like them, all right? Now, before we get to that, let's talk about how to be poor. When will the insanity stop. Now this person didn't put a specific number on this, so I don't know how much it is, but it says, I have lost a lot of money. What do I do? Um, so a few months ago, I started futures trading because I'm not interested in long-term investing. First of all, you're an idiot, okay? I am not interested in long-term investing. What are you, dumb, dumb as a brick? Of course you should be interested in long-term investing. It's how you're going to retire someday, okay? But let's push that aside. I had X dollars. We don't know how many, okay? Maybe $44 billion. After a few weeks, I started making quite good profits, which allowed me to almost double my deposit to 2X. Now, first of all, do you guys see any issues with that sentence other than the grammar? After a few weeks, I start... After a few weeks, a few weeks, a few weeks... I started making quite good profits and basically doubled my account. You doubled your account in a few weeks with very little to no experience. Okay. Yeah, sounds about right. That just defies logic and common sense like I just said. 
Stupid is as stupid does, sir. Okay. I became overconfident. Shocker. Okay. You must have been really confident when you were trading that much money a few weeks into your trading career. I didn't put stop losses in, and this is what killed me. Yeah, you're right. It's exactly what killed you. You're correct. Um, but more than not putting stop losses in, risking way too much money. If you didn't put a stop loss in and you risked $5 on a trade, how bad could it really, really, really be? Honestly, think about what I'm saying. If you're risking $5 a trade and you lost 100 R, you lose 500 bucks. It wouldn't be the end of the world and you wouldn't be writing a post. I have lost a lot of money. So even if you don't take stop losses, risking small amounts of money is still a great idea because the worst you're going to lose is 50, 100, 200 bucks. Not 50, 100, 200,000. I don't know what this person lost, but seriously, it doesn't sound like it was good. All right. I can't imagine telling anyone from my family about this. This was a considerable amount of money. Guys, this is just stupid. That's all I can say. Some people think it's rude or mean of me to be so tough on these people. I'm, it's not. I'm trying to make a point to you guys. This is real. This business is no joke. And if you don't respect it and you wake up one day and decide that you're just better than the market, this is going to happen to you and you're going to lose a lot of money. So while I tell everybody, you know, this is important for trading, that's important. Number one thing is always money management, isn't it? Because if you risk very, 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 very small amounts of money, you can't lose a lot of money, right? You just can't, okay? Um, exactly, Brian. How do you get rich? you know, risking $5 a trade. I can't. And that's what these people think. Well, I, I can't get rich doing that. And, and my buddy Jimmy over there doubled his account in a month and I have to do the same thing. And so-and-so made gazillion dollars in crypto, blah, 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 blah. And it's why you're not trading anymore. And it's why you've lost all that money. Right now, yeah, you're probably wishing you had that money back. And guess what? If you risked $5 a trade, you'd still have 99% of it. You got 99 problems, but a stop loss ain't one. All right. All right. Let's move along. This stuff just pisses me off when I see people just being stupid. It's called proper risk control or money management. Get some. Plain and simple. Go get some. Now, we're going to get to the brass tax here on the next slide. Okay. We're going to get to the brass tax. And this slide is basically everything you need to know about trading. Okay. It's not everything you need to know. It's most of what you need to know about trading. Okay. These are the actual genuine keys to successful trading. No, there's no sales pitch in here. No, there's no, hey, buy my course. There's none of that. These are the actual keys to successful trading. Find a stock with void on a higher time frame, a 60-minute chart or a daily chart. You can scan dollar gainers, dollar losers, or other preferred scans to find it. Now, obviously, when I say find a stock, a uh, well, you need to know what, is, what void is, right? Obviously. But find a stock with void on a higher time frame, okay? Obviously, there's more to it. Like, it can't be too extended, right? It can't be 17 days in a row up. There's a little more to it than that. Develop a market bias on the Q's, SPY, or IWM. In the pre-market, before the market opens at 930, develop a market bias. But do I think the market's going higher, lower, or neutral today? Then... From your scan, is preferred misspelled? What is it, two R's? What was it? Yep, it is two R's. There we go. All right. So, from your scanned list above, watch and wait for a stock to show you relative strength or relative weakness. Notice, I did not say a pattern yet. I said watch and wait for a stock to show you relative strength or relative weakness against the market. The market meaning the Qs, the SPY, or the IWN. You're like, well, how do I know which one? I got an email last night about that. I'm like, well, if it's a NASDAQ stock, the Qs. If it's a New York stock, the SPY. And the IWM, you could use probably for all of them because this one usually lags the other two. So NASDAQ stock, Qs, NVIDIA, Apple, Microsoft, Meta, great. IBM, Coca-Cola, whatever, SPY. It's pretty simple. This can be done on any time frame. I prefer two and five minutes for morning scalping. That's what I prefer. If I'm going to scalp the first hour of the day, I prefer watching the stocks on two and five minute charts to gain 
the relative strength or relative weakness concept. You can do it on a three and a five. I don't like the one minute that much. I still look at it. I still use it, but I don't trade off of it. Okay. Uh, very often. Occasionally I do. All right. Today we did on Roku, but anyway, two and five minute. Then after this, after finding said stock, then watch and wait for a pattern on said stock. Three bar play, buy set up, sell break, whatever. Take the trade, manage in between, and don't be an idiot. That's it. Take the trade, manage in between, and just don't be an idiot. That's it. I've just summed up the basic process of successful trading. Now, is there minutia to this? Like, what does a good three bar play look like? Yes. What does a good gapping stock look like? Yes. Okay. Yes. There's more to this, right? When I say find a stock with void, I don't mean a stock that had a 500% ATR day yesterday. I don't mean a stock that's down nine days in a row and you want to short it. I don't mean that, but there's more nuance to that. But this is the basic five bullet points you need to know. And you guys are fucking it up. That's all I have to say. You're fucking it up. Plain and simple. I told you I was going to get a little uppity today. I look at the shit that you guys put out there and I twist my head and I'm like, what are you thinking? Yes, strong words. Some people are offended by it. Sorry, go to your safe space. Find your binky and blanket, all right? This business does not have to be so damn difficult. Why do you make it such? Ask yourself, go look in the mirror. Walk away for a second. Go look in the mirror. Why do you make it so hard? Why do you make it so hard? Ask yourself that. Go look in the mirror. Why do I make this business so hard? Because you're an idiot. I'm not preaching at you. I've been that idiot. I was that idiot for probably 18 months to two years when I started. Okay? So is it hypoc a little hypocritical? It is a little. But I'm trying to rattle you and shake you because this is the crap you guys do. And really, these five bullet points are everything you need. Find void. Find a market bias. Find something that's stronger or weaker than the market. Then take a pattern. Manage in between and don't fuck it up. That's it. We can just close the book now and go home. Sadly, there's like 12, 15 more slides left. Moment of silence for the idiots. It's, a, it's astonishing to me, honestly, because this is all trading really is. Everything else or anything else that you do is just ego driven. Anything else you do is just based on your ego or fear or fear. You get out too soon, that's fear. Trying to short the strongest stock in the market, that's ego. Not taking a stop loss, it's a little bit of both. Just stop doing those things, okay? Now, let's get into some nuts and bolts, all right? You're gonna see this slide at the end of the presentation. I'll remind you of it again and I'll probably be mean again. All right, eliminate personal emotion, guys. Just read the damn chart, okay? What were traders thinking as the red bar was forming and creating an engulfing bar. So what we have here, we don't know the previous information. We're just gonna go with the seven, eight bars that we have in front of us, okay? We have a consolidation here, right? Red bars, green bars, red bars, green bar. And then we see a big red bar come in. So traders were likely thinking when this red bar was forming that this support area is being broken, right? This support area is being broken and the stock is likely going lower. Does it mean it's shortable? I don't know, I don't have enough information. But that's the thought process. Sellers are finally taking full control. We had a tug of war, we had a battle here. Sellers take over. Over here on the right though, has their thinking changed when it turned into a bottoming tail bar? And if so, why? Well, yes, right? Obviously, yes. Because what does this represent? This represents a test, a battle. And the battle was won largely, mostly by the buyers, right? Because this tail, we talked about it a few weeks, a month ago, this tail is actually green, right? It was all red. Like this, this bar right here looked identical to this red bar over here. At one point in time, they looked identical, but now they don't. Now one has a tail, and that tail represents buyers. It's just green, 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 green. So the stock tried to break under support, 
and go lower. It was not able to consolidate the effort lower, right? It was not able to consolidate the effort. Basically, it was just a peekaboo below and right back up, which was does what? It outs the buyers. It does. It outs the buyers. It basically, if the buyers were trying to be coy up here, not showing their full hand, they showed it right here. They said, yeah, we're actually really strong. There's actually quite a few of us. We didn't want you to know that, but there's actually quite a few of us. So new information changes the picture, which changes our bias. A possible breakdown turns into a confirmation of strength. Now, why am I bringing this up to you? Because this happens all the time. You look at a stock and it looks like it's got great strength. And then new information suggests it has weakness or the new information confirms the strength. This is new information. And every time you get a new bar, a new pivot, you get new information. And you have to adjust your opinion. It might be the same opinion based on the new information, but it might be a completely different opinion. It's like when someone says, do you ever fade a stock on the gap list? Well, yes, if I get new information that suggests I should, then we might fade a stock. BA the other day was an example. It was a big gap down that we looked to go long on potentially, right? So new information might change your opinion. This is the same idea, same concept. What were traders thinking? Weakness. Has their thinking changed when it turned in from a red bar into a green engulfing bar? We saw this, was it yesterday or Monday? We saw this on Dell. Granted, Dell didn't have all this craziness to the left, but Dell started off weak. And then it got completely engulfed. And then the next couple bars later put in a little bit of a bottoming tail and then Dell just went higher for the rest of the day. Hint, hint, you're gonna see Dell later. I'm pretty sure I put it in here. New information changes your bias, changes your opinion, changes your perspective. Stop with the personal opinions, just read the chart. The emotion that you're feeling has nothing to do with the chart. It has everything to do with you. The chart has no feelings. It's just a chart. But the chart inside of it has people in it, right? Everyone that's trading this stock, I don't care if it's a pension fund, I don't care if it's Pablo Escobar back in 1993, everyone who's trading this stock is represented in these green and red candlesticks. But in and of itself, there's no emotion there. You're placing your personal emotion on it. Just let the chart speak to you, stop speaking to it. Don't yell at it, just be calm and listen. And in this case, what looked to be weakness turned into a confirmation of strength. You go long on this and you go long seven out of eight days of the week. Sorry, eight out of seven days of the week. Okay, so candlesticks, just keep it simple. A reversal candle's potency is measured by the depth or level of penetration into the prior bar. Go back, go back. The depth and level of penetration on this green bar is over 100%. If this green bar was like 10%, 20%, there's actually no real level or depth of penetration here. You're still believing and thinking the sellers might be in control, right? If this bar right here was that big, right? Give it a second. If this bar was that big, you're still thinking it's super weak. But when the bar is that big, it completely changes your opinion because of what it accomplished. And what it accomplished was getting rid of all of these sellers. They're gone now. They've been overtaken, okay? So we go back. A reversal candle's potency is measured by the depth or level of penetration into the prior bar. We just saw it, okay? Tails on a candle either increase or decrease supply. Topping tails increase supply, bottoming tails decrease supply. Okay, we just saw that too. The slide before that, okay, this bottoming tail is decreasing supply. Demand is increasing. Demand is increasing. That's eating up the supply. When you think about supply and demand, there's 100 pairs of jeans for sale, a whole slew of people come into the store, and all of a sudden there's only 20 for sale now because they bought the other 80 pairs. That's what this bar is. Supply is waning, demand is increasing. That means higher prices. If you owned a store and demand was huge for a product, you'd raise the prices. Of course you would, that's just good business. So, 
read the chart. Okay? Don't put your personal opinion to it, your emotion. Just read the chart. Okay? Yeah, probably, Jordan. <laughs> anyway, expanding range candles, wide range igniting bars tell us buying or selling is being ignited or exhausted. Context is important here. What does this mean? A wide range bar that's four or five bars up is likely being exhausted, right? You have to think, for example, NVIDIA right now might be getting close to exhaustion. But if that wide range bar is the first or second bar, it's likely igniting. The volume has an impact on this as well. Narrowing range candle, sorry, sorry. Narrowing range candles tell us that volatility is low and momentum is decreasing. But context is important. Where they happen matters. Okay, where they happen matters. All right, so let's take a look at some charts. You've seen a couple, like two of these charts, and the other four or five you haven't seen. All right, so the first two I think you've seen before. All right, engulfing bar picture of money. We talked about it a couple slides ago. You have a nice three bar play, four bar play turns into a breakout, right? And then you get this, sellers try to creep in, boom. They come right back up. That means buyers say, whoa, hold my beer. This is wonderful because now you know what your stop is. It's definitely under that bottoming tail. And now you have a confirmation of strength. Buyers just proved to you that they were really strong. You knew they were strong over here, but then the sellers tested them. They went into the ring, hit them in the mouth and they said, please hold my beer, please. Is that all you got? Bottoming tail, go higher. Same here. Same concept, right? Three bar play actually stops out, right? Little three bar play one even stops out, but then you get a green bar, which you're like, okay, this means higher prices. And then it gets completely engulfed by a red bar. The sellers go, no, 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 hold my beer. So there was a battle that formed, right? And the sellers clearly won. They were winning beforehand, but they were tested right here and they passed the test. Great entry, super great. Yes, you may have been stopped out on the first entry. If you didn't give it room, I usually give them room. But if you didn't, you probably got stopped out on the first three bar play. You get back in and this is amazing. Take the easy money. Take the easy money. On the flip side, eliminate your emotions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bars up topping tail. That's not bad, right? Because you're at resistance or peekaboo above, you leave a huge topping tail, huge volume on the previous bar, but I'm not gonna be the topping tail. I'm going to wait for it to trigger. I am not going to be the first person to short this, Damien. I'm not. While I have a strong inclination, there's a pullback ahead. I'm going to let it confirm. And the confirmation means waiting a little bit and waiting means giving up a little bit of profits. I'm giving up a little bit of money for a higher likelihood of success. You can get in at 122 on a maybe drop down to a lower, lower time frame, right? But it's a little bit riskier because you're the first person that's willing to short the stock, right? You're the first person willing to short the stock. I don't need to be first. I just need to make money. That's it. Don't need to be first. Put the ego away. I'll let it trigger. Pulls back, down to the moving average, okay? The waiting's the hardest part. Rest in peace there. Pulls back to 114, kind of chops around. And that's it, that's, that's, that's the meat and potatoes. 120, 119, down to that 114 area, five bucks. That's the meat and potatoes. Now, do you guys remember this? I hope so, it wasn't that long ago, it was yesterday. It was yesterday. I really need you guys to pay attention to this slide. Okay. This was the cues two days ago on Monday. Super wide range green bar on the 60. Green bar, green bar, green bar, green bar, green bar, green bar. I think we can all agree that it's not that often that the cues put in a seven or eight dollar move. That's a big move for the Qs. That's nearly a 2% day. And for the Qs, 2% is a lot. So, guys, what generally happens after an extreme wide range bar on a stock? 
extreme. Note, I said extreme. I didn't say wide range. I said extreme wide range bar. What typically happens? Talk to me. I need answers from this one. What typically happens the next day after an extreme wide range bar? Only one person's willing to stick their, ne stick their neck out. It's like you guys dropped your pants in Alaska. It's all shriveling up. There's usually one of two things happens. Usually a consolidation day, inside consolidation day, or a pullback, right? That's most of the time, right? There's usually some type of time correction or pullback, like I always said. An inside day or a pullback, okay? They can be challenging days to trade, okay? But usually a lot of chop, okay? So to me, after I saw this day on Monday, I thought, that's what I'm expecting on Tuesday, which was yesterday, right? And what do you get? This little area right here at 183.50, a little kind of one minute breakdown. Stop loss up here. Now, hold on, hold on. Pull this here. I'll delete it in a second. Let's make it super wide so you can see it. There. Maybe yellow. Maybe orange. Okay. This was the stock off the open on the one minute. This was the market off the open on the one minute. Green, 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 three bars in a row. Red, green, red. Red, green, red. Green, green, green. Granted, it's early. Three minutes into the day is very difficult to discern actual bias in three minutes. Okay? Very difficult. But the early indication, the early indication is relative weakness on the stock. Relative weakness on the stock. The previous day in the market, okay, the previous day in the market was a monster, monster wide range green day. I am not, to be clear, I'm not expecting another monster green day. So what there's, there's, where does that leave me? There's safety. There's safety in shorting a stock today. Why? Because the, the likelihood of back-to-back -back extreme wide range green days are small. It could be a small green day, but that's probably not going to hurt my relative weakness too much. But the odds of back-to-back -back wide range monster days, slim, very slim. I'm playing the odds. So if I look for a stock with relative weakness on a day that I believe will be choppy, I think my odds go up. And this stock clearly had relative weakness. Stock gaps down, market gaps down. Market bullies, stock goes sideways. Market bullies, stock goes sideways. 183.50, stop loss 184.25. Breakdown, boom, drops down like 182.75. Now, is that a monster move? Nope, it's not a monster move. Okay, it's like 1R. But it's the concept that I want you after. This stock dropped like a stone the second the market pulled back. I want you to take a look at it. Pull this over to here, right there. Right there. The second that the market started to pull in this stock started going south and it kept going and it kept going do you understand the concept I, I need yeses or nos here do you understand why this trade looks so good it's not just a breakdown you have to look at the previous day in the market you have to look at what the current day in the market is doing and you're sitting here going damn I'm starting to really check a lot of boxes here. We're probably not going to have back-to-back -back $7 days in the queues. That's, a, that's, a, that's rare. And if that does happen, you chalk it up and go, okay, it was a statistical anomaly that day. That was an outlier. Back-to-back -back $7 days in the queues. Come on. Outlier. I'll take the loss if that happens. Right? 
pulls back, shows relative weakness. That's it. That's it. This is not complicated. Not complicated at all. All right, let's try it again. You guys remember this one? Told you it'd be in here. No brainer trade. Two minute turnaround bar with a market bounce. So this was the day the market decided to bounce. Now, I use the SPY because this is a New York stock. Now the Qs are a little bit easier to read on this day, okay? But take a look, one, two, three, four, five, kind of five or six down days nearing some support. Five or six down days nearing support. Now, was I expecting a $7 day? No, no, no. But I was expecting a bounce. I wasn't expecting a $7 day, but I wasn't expecting lower either. Meaning, I didn't expect this to put in a monster move, but I did expect a bounce. So, you take a look at Dell. What do you have? A stock that's been moving higher, chopping around. It's just gapping just enough to get over this prior pivot, right around the $78 mark. Okay. Now, I should have put the two-minute SPY in here. I apologize. I'm sorry I forgot to do that. But you can see the daily of the SPY and the daily of Dell. Dell's already showing relative strength. The market gapped up very subtly. Dell gapped up nicely. My bias on the market was long. Bias on Dell, long. What happens? Dell gaps up, immediately puts in a pretty good size for Dell, a wide range bar, right? This is a wide range red bar on Dell. And right after the wide range red bar, the green bar comes in and engulfs it. Confirmation of strength. Buyers said to the seller, sorry, we're just stronger than you today. A little bit of a push higher, slight, and then what? Another bar right here. That bottoming tail bar is another confirmation of strength. Stop, moves up, pulls back, moves up, pulls back, and just grinds higher all day. Pretty easy money. It started off strong and never really put you in trouble. You're in at 78.10, stop 77.40. You're going, oh my gosh, it's a wide stop, 70 cents. But it did go to 79.70 or something like that. More like a dollar sixty. It all starts with your, your market bias, the gap on the stock, and then a pattern. Oh, like, like that slide said, oh my gosh. No brainer. After that, it's just the don't be an idiot's part, right? Just don't be an idiot. You did everything right. You scanned for a gap, you found one. You developed a market bias long, great. You waited for relative strength or a pattern and or a pattern. You got it. Then you take the trade, manage in between, don't be an idiot. Take the trade, manage in between, don't be an idiot. Okay? What about this? Exceptional technical understanding. Stock has a very small gap up, gets to $50, and then just loses its shit. Just, just tanks. One, two, three, four, five, six bars down. Bounce, pull back, bounce. Well, look at the whole picture. What is the expectation? Start on the higher. Well, stock has a small gap up, goes to 50 bucks, just above resistance, right? It's actually on the 60, a little higher, but on the five minute, right at 50. And where is 50? The same exact spot the stock failed before. It fails again. Comes all the way down to the low. What happened the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times it's tested 48.50? Bounce, 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 bounce. Some bounces are bigger than others, but it's bounced the last five, six times it's tested. What's probably going to happen? It's probably going to bounce. Volume spike at the bottom, retest over here. Now, I am not telling you to necessarily buy this trade. I am looking at this and showing you this slide so that you'll understand the expectation. The expectation is bounce. It's extended, super wide range. I mean, look at the size of these bars compared to the previous bars over here, right? Look at the size of those red bars compared to these red bars. These bars are like 5X, these bars. These are super wide range bars. Then you get a huge volume spike down low here. And it's all happening right at higher time frame, 60 minute support, where the stock has bounced like five times previously. You're gonna get a bounce. I would rather see you buy this at 48.60, even though it only went 15 cents, or buy that, okay? Now, I am not trying to say 
you would definitely take this or not take this, but there you could certainly come up with some reason. I'm trying to get you to read multiple time frames. Take the five minute, take the 60, match them. Then look for an entry pattern. Look at what the market's doing. Put it all together. It's really not that difficult to do. I think most people can look at this pink line on the 60 and go, yeah, there's a lot of support there. And then you can look at this and go, yeah, there's a lot of support there because of the 60, right? Guys, find a stock with void on a higher time frame. 60 minute and daily for intraday traders. Scan your dollar gainers and your dollar losers or other preferred scans. If you have a, a trading platform that has a different scan, if, if you use TraderView or FinViz or whoever you use, obviously there's more to this. You're going to need to know what a good gap looks like. Like the Dell gap was a nice gap going to develop a market bias every single morning. Your goal is to be as accurate as possible. And remember, your initial bias might change 15 minutes into the day. The market might throw you a curveball, and you may have to be flexible, which is why we always put a long and a short list together, even if our bias is strong long. I still put a short list together. If my bias is strong short, I'm still putting a long list together. Prepare for all possible scenarios. Have a plan B. Okay, from your scanned list above, watch and wait for the stock to show you some relative strength, relative weakness against the market. This can be done on any time frame, right? I just like the two and the five. After finding said stock, watch and wait for a pattern. Take the trade, manage in between, and don't be an effing idiot. Roku, today. One minute Roku, one minute Q's. Q's put in a wide range green bar, little one minute three bar play, peekabooed and started just chopping around. As they chopped, what did Roku do? Two, four, six, eight, eight or nine bars into the day, two, four, six, eight or nine bars into the day. One is basing near the high, one is basing near the low. One is basing at the high and one is basing at the low. That's relative weakness. My market bias today was not strong long. My market bias today was chop, choppy. If my market bias was strong long, maybe I don't take Roku, right? If my market bias is strong long, maybe I don't take Roku. But that wasn't my market bias today. So... I look at it, 9065, 9070, 92 stop loss. There's the call. Roker is weaker than the market. There's the PL, whatever. Also, hold on. There's Roku breaking a 15 minute trend line at $92. My only concern was this bottoming tail right here, right there. And that was at like 9040 or something like that, somewhere 9035, 9040, something like that. Okay, that was my only real concern. Why? Because all I needed to get to 90, once we got to 90, we take some off and go to break even. I don't have to worry about the $89 pivot for me because once I get to my $90 area, it's free money. Lock in a thousand bucks, go to even, hope to make four grand. And there's your 15 minute. I personally, I look at this as, as easy trading. The only thing that could have really hurt me here was a market breakout, an unexpected breakout. I thought the market would be choppy, and it was. It was bullish choppy at the time, but then it got weak. And then when the market got weak, Roku just tanked, right? The only thing that's, remember, there are five market stock market events, all right, when it comes to strength and weakness. There's extreme strength, normal average strength, sideways chop, normal average weakness, and extreme weakness. Those are the five things the market can do. The only one that really concerned me today was extreme strength in the queues. And I thought that was a long shot. I did. I thought it was a long shot to get extreme strength in the queues today. So I'm willing to take this. So it goes back to this. 
Why are you complicating your trading so damn much? And what, what's the purpose? Like, why, why do you need to be a hero all the time? Why can't you just take an obvious trade and just do the obvious thing? Right? It's like, I use a basketball analogy, and maybe it's not a good analogy, but I think it's a great analogy. Modern-day basketball is all about three-pointers. Oh, three is more than two. You see these guys wide open on a fast break, and what do they do? They check up and spot check a three. The basket, there's no one in front of you. Everyone's at the other end of the court. You just stole the goddamn basketball. Instead of dunking the ball for a guaranteed two, you're going to take a 40% chance at a three. 100% chance at two or a 40% chance at three. Well, I'm sorry, but in trading... I'm taking the guaranteed two. If you want to take the 40% three, go for it. But I'm taking the guaranteed two. That's the way I look at it. I'm playing the percentages. I'm playing the odds. I'll take a little less money for a higher probability. That's it. You're taking the dopamine, right? That's it. You choose how you want to trade. That's how I choose to trade. Maybe your style is different, and that's okay. But these five bullet points are pretty much trading in a nutshell. Obviously, we have money management. Obviously, we have trade management. Obviously, we have pre-trade entries, bottoming tails, topping tails, volume spike support. I get it. But this is the basic outline of good trading. It's broad. I agree. But it's the basic outline of good trading. Void on a higher time frame. Market bias. Relative strength or weakness, why? Gives you flexibility. You don't have to be perfect with your market call. If you take a stock that has perfect correlation to the market, 10 out of 10 correlation, the market moves, the stock moves. Well, guess what? If you're wrong about the market, you're wrong about the stock too. Relative strength, relative weakness gives you flexibility, room for mistakes, room for error. I can be a little wrong on my market call, but if the stock has genuine strength or weakness, I'm going to be okay. After finding that stock, you watch and wait for a pattern. Then you just take it. Manage in between. Don't be an idiot. Virtual mic drop. Virtual mic drop. Get your head out of your ass and do it right. Stop making it so complicated, okay? Your ego is only going to get you into trouble in this business. There's just no place for it, no need for it. I don't really have anything more to say because if I do, I'm going to probably explode. I'm just, I'm watching some of the things that people do and I just, it's like you can lead a horse to water, but at some point you got to step in and drink it. You know what I mean? And I'm not kidding about this. This isn't like ha ha trying to be funny or joking. What I just talked about is the difference between you going to work every day for someone else or are you working for yourself on your own terms at your own time, whenever, wherever you want? It's not a joke. So you choose. You want to, you like your job? Great. No big deal. You don't, then you got a problem on your hands. This is the ultimate level of freedom and flexibility. Very few things in life gives you this level of freedom and flexibility. And if you want that, you're serious about that, then you'll heed those five bullet points and you'll stop messing around. You'll just get serious about it and just do what's required of you. Consequence system, accountability partner will help you get there sooner. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. We'll get back at it again next week.